Today we're going to create this very cool ground explosion completely in simulation nodes. So let's get started by going into geometry nodes. We don't need the cube. I want to create a different object that's going to push out the explosion. So I'm going to delete it. I'm going to press shift A and I want to import a UV sphere. I don't need the whole UV sphere. So let's go into edit mode and go into side view by pressing the pad one and press alt Z and then you can select the bottom part and press X and delete vertices. Let's also make it in object mode a bit smaller and let's press control A to apply the scale. From here, we're going to import a new geometry nodes. And what we want to start with is distributing a lot of points on this object. So let's press shift A and search for a distribute points on faces node. Put that over here and let's set the density on like a thousand. Now we want to push these points outwards and to do this we're going to import a simulation zone and we put that like uh, this and we connect it like uh, that. Now to make them pushed out we're going to need a few things. First thing we're going to need an initial velocity. So let's create that by clicking on the simulation input. Press N to make this pop-up open and create a new attribute that we're going to call velocity. This velocity attribute should not be geometry, of course, it should be a, a vector. And let's connect that like this. Now we also need a set position node so that we can actually reposition the points. So let's put that over here. And then we want to say, okay, we want to push these points out along the normal direction of each point. And we got that normal direction right over here. So if we connect the normal with the velocity, and we also connect velocity with the offset of the set position, then you will see boom, it will already be pushed out. It's going a bit too fast, of course, so let's slow it down by adding in a vector math node. Set this over there and set this from add to scale so that we can scale down the speed of the normal map. For now, I'm going to set this on 0.4. At the moment, the particles go like infinitely far. I don't want that. I want that they start fast and they gradually slow down till they stop. And we can do this by adding in another vector math node. Add that over here and we want to each frame we want to divide the velocity by a certain number so set this on divide and then let's set this on 1.2 and now if you press play boom they stop at a certain point like this when the points stop i want to make them disappear so we can make it that if you do a delete geometry and you place that over there as the selection we want to say okay when the speed of each particle is zero delete it and we can determine this with another vector math node place that over there and set this on length length basically sums up the three axes of each vector of the velocity so if you place that like this and you set it as the selection now we can say with a math node we can say okay if the sum of the velocity is less than, for example, 0 0.01, delete the geometry. So then we're getting this. Boom, it gets deleted. I also want to add in some randomization to like the speed of it, because now it's like going in a perfect ball and a real explosion would never be a perfect ball. So the scaling over here, I'm going to randomize that with a random value node. Set that over here and then you will see it gets randomized. Now the minimum value, I don't want that to be zero because the particle should never like stand still. So I'm going to make this point one. I don't want that the simulation only pushes out points like at one frame, but I want them to push out like for like three or four frames. I want it to push out points. To do this, add in a join geometry node, set that before the set position and then connect the distribute points on faces with that. And then we're getting this. And you see it doesn't really work it's still doing like one frame of pushing it out that's because what's happening now at the beginning those new points that we're adding in after the first frame don't have any velocity and if they don't have any velocity then they immediately get deleted by the delete geometry node so we need to give these new points also velocity and we're going to do this by adding in a vector math node place it before the divide and we also want to add this scale over there and then you will see that it works Okay, now that we have this, from here our geometry nodes is kind of going to split up. It's going to be like this, it will go to the fire of the explosion, and if we go down, we create the smoke of the explosion. Let's first create the smoke of the explosion. So to create the smoke of the explosion, I want that the particles that we shoot out leave a trail of new particles. Because if you look at explosions, it's never like a ball of, of smoke, right? It's like a trail of smoke. So I want that this is like... A trail of points we can do this by adding in a simulation zone and for this one we don't just connect it like this no we are going to insert a join geometry node and we place that over here and we just connect this like this and now if you 
connect it like this as well, you will see you're getting a trail of points. Now on each point that we're creating over here, I want to instance an object on that. I want to create like a point cloud on each point that we're adding in over here. If you press shift A and you do an instance on points node right over here and you instance an icosphere, you're getting it like this. Icosphere should not be so big, of course. So let's set the radius of each icosphere on point two. Now on each icosphere, we want to distribute a lot of points. So if we do shift A and we do an distribute points on faces, then we can set that like this. And let's set the density on 100. And we're getting it like that. However, then you will see that on each icosphere, the points are distributed in the exact same way. This is because it's still seeing it as an instance each icosphere. We want to see this as a real mesh. So what we want to do is press shift A, search for realize instances node and place that over there. And now for each icosphere, it will determine like a random distribution for the points. Now there are two things that we want to do. First thing, these new particles that we added in, when it's pushed out, when the explosion is done, they should like slowly fade away. And also they should become smaller like they should start as big smoke balls but over time they should become smaller so that they can clearly fade away we're going to do this with another simulation zone place that like uh, this actually we don't need to connect it like this we are going to again do a join geometry and put that over here so that we're joining it inside of the simulation now if you press play we're having this now you will see if we do it like this yeah, then your computer is going to lag because on each icosphere, new points are added in each frame. And that creates a lot of points. And we don't want that. We only want those points to be inserted on one frame only. So at the frame that the icosphere is placed there, that's the only frame that the points should be added in. If we take a look, if we do like Alt, Shift, click on the second simulation output, then we want to make it that the points that we're adding in over here are only there for one frame. Let's create some space to do this. Because what we want to do is we want to track the age of each point that we added in over here. And to do this, we're going to, in the simulation input over here, we're going to add in an age attribute. And this age attribute should be an integer. And what we want is that the age should go up by one each frame. So we connect it like this and with a math node, we add one each frame. However, now we're not tracking the age of each individual vertice. No, we're tracking the age of the whole simulation at once. We don't want this. So to track the age of each individual particle, we want to capture the age of each individual particle with a capture attribute node. Set this from float to integer, and then you can connect the age with the value. And then this attribute value, you connect that with the add node. And now we can say, okay, with a delete geometry node, we can set that over here. And with the selection, we want to say if the age is higher than a certain value, we want to delete it. So if you add in a compare node and set this from float to integer, we can say if the age of a particle is higher than, for example, four, then we want to delete it. We now press play and you see that is happening. But we want to delete the particle right after the moment that it got placed there. So we set the B value over here on zero so that it will only be there for one frame. Now, if you go back to the end and you connect this simulation output, then you will see, okay, that's good. Now it's only one layer of points that is placed over there. These points, I want that they slowly move away. But I don't just want that they move away like in a straight line. No, I want them to slowly move away like, like real smoke would do. And we can do this with a noise texture. So let's press Shift A and add in a noise texture. And to move them away, we can do a set position node. And if we connect the color with the offset, then you see we're getting this. Oof, yeah, that's not good. You see they are now like pushed out like diagonally up. We don't want that. So let's make it that they stay within its place. And we want to do this by adding in a vector math node. Add that over here. Set this from add to subtract. And we want to subtract on each axis 0.5. And then you will see they stay in its place. I do think that the noise is a bit too strong. So we're going to scale this down with another vector math node. You can just duplicate this one. Set this from add to scale. And then we want to set this scaling on 0.1.
And now if we press play, that's better. I don't want the noise to be affecting the z-axis. I want to have control myself over the z-axis. So let's first make it that the noise is only doing it over the x and y axis. Do this with another vector math node. Duplicate this one, place it over there. Set it from subtract to multiply and set it all on one except for the z-axis. Set this one on zero and you will see it will only do it over the x and y axis. Cool, let's now make it that it kind of like fades away very slowly. So we're going to do this with another vector math node. Duplicate this one, set it over there and set this on add. Set this for now all on a zero. And then let's say, let's make it that it's going over the x axis a little bit and over the z axis a little bit so that it goes diagonally up very slowly. So let's set the x axis on 0.005 and the z axis also on 0.005. And then you're getting this effect that it slowly fades away. Now it slowly fades away. However, it's not disappearing yet. It just stays there. So let's make it that it will disappear. First thing we want to do is we want to set a beginning radius of each point. So let's press shift A and add in a set point radius node. Set that over here. And then you'll see you can set the radius of each point. If you set it on 0.5, for example, points are way bigger. The radius in the set point radius node, I want that to be dependent on the lifetime of each particle. So also for these particles, we're going to track the H. So in this simulation input, let's click plus over here and do an H attribute. Set this on integer again. And we're basically going to do the same thing as before. If we do a capture attribute node and also a math node, we can set the float over here to integer. Connect H with that capture attribute. Connect this one like this. We want to add one each frame and then connect it like this. Then we're tracking the H of each point. If we add in a math node and we set this from add to subtract, then we can say with the first value of the subtract, if we set that on point three, for example, this value is going to be the beginning radius of each point. And we want to say, okay, each frame, we want to subtract a value from this radius so that it becomes smaller. So if we connect this with the radius, we want to subtract each frame a fraction of the H. So if we do another math node like this, and we set this on multiply. I want to multiply each H value by 0.005. So that we can subtract 0.5% of the H each frame. And now if you do this, then we're getting this. Then you see it becomes smaller. Now you see when you press play, the particles become bigger again, right? That's because at the moment this subtract value over here also allows values below zero. If you turn on clamp over here, then that doesn't do that. If you now press play, then you will see they will be gone. They don't, they don't get bigger anymore. However, those points, although you don't see them, they are still there. They just have a scaling of zero. I don't want this. I want them to be deleted when they get very small. So if you add in a delete geometry node, and then with the selection, we want to say, okay, if the subtract is equal to zero, delete it. So if you press shift A and you add in a compare node and you set this from greater than to equal, then we can say, okay, if the subtract equal to zero, delete the point. And although you don't see a difference, this does work actually. And then you will see we're already getting like an explosion effect that it fades away, which is pretty cool. And of course you can play around yourself with the values of the noise texture, for example, and with the speed of the particles that's all up to you you can make it suit your scene more if you like but these values that i'm inserting those are values that while practicing for this tutorial i found that these values work the best yeah now our explosion only consists of points it's not smoke yet so let's make it like smoke we're going to do this by converting these points into volumes. So let's do a points to volume node right over here. And let's set the resolution from amount to size. Let's give it a bit more resolution by making the voxel size 0.07. And then you see the thickness of the smoke. I want that to be dependent on the radius of each particle. So if you add in a radius node, then this node contains the radius information of each particle. And if you connect that, with the radius over here, then you will see that works. And we're getting this. Already pretty cool. I want this to be a bit more randomized because in real life, the smoke would never be like a uniform scaling, right? So let's add in a math node, set this from add to multiply. And we want to multiply the radius with a random value, set that like this. And then it's like that. 
Really cool. If you want to have different random values for this, you can set the minimum on like 0.1, for example, and the maximum on like 0.5, something like that. Now, this is not it for the smoke. No, I want to convert this smoke now to a mesh so that it will actually merge with each other. So if you press Shift A and we add in a volume to mesh node and we set that like this, then we're getting ooh, this. This already looks pretty cool. But now we want to convert this again to smoke. And we're going to do that by assigning a material to it that has a, like a volumetric material. So if you do set material and we then split our screen in half like uh, this and we set this to the shader editor. Let's also go into cycles. So let's do render view mode, save the file, control S and do render properties, EV to cycles, set it on GPU and then we're getting uh, this. Let's create a new material by clicking new and let's name this smoke. Let's delete the principal BSDF and let's add in a principal volume for this and let's connect that with the volume. Then you don't see anything happening in the set material. You have to set the smoke material, of course, and then we're getting smoke. I think this will look better if we set the density of the principal volume to like 10, for example, or like this. Yeah, that looks cool. Then you see we're really getting an explosion and this is very responsive actually like this. Yeah, that looks cool. You can also, for example, change the color of the smoke to be a little bit brownish if, you, if you're having like a sand scene, for example, like in the desert. Or if you want to have like blue smoke, you can do that as well. Just whatever you like. I will keep it on gray. Now that we've done the smoke, I want to add in fire to this. And we're going to do this in a pretty easy way. We're going all the way back to almost the beginning. Because earlier I told you that over here we would split our geometry nodes into fire and smoke. And we're still going to do this. So if you do alt shift click on this simulation output, then we can still see the original points that are shooted out from here. So these points, we want to replace them with icospheres. So let's do that by adding in an instance on points nodes, add that over here, and we're going to do an icosphere, add that as the instance. I don't have to be in cycles anymore. I will go into material preview for now. Yeah, you now see that these icospheres, they stay really big. I don't want this. I want that over time, they become smaller and smaller and smaller. So we're going to do the same thing as with the smoke. We're going to set radius. So if we do a set radius for the points that we're creating over here, set point radius like this, set that over there. I want this set point radius to be dependent on the speed of each particle. So let's set this length value into the radius. And now if I do alt shift click on the simulation output, then you can see that that doesn't work. I've been playing around with this. And at some point I was like, oh, I'm stupid because the points are not going to be visible in material preview mode. So you have to go into solid view mode to see them. And then you see they start off big and then they become smaller the further they go. Now we have a radius for these particles. So let's do alt shift click on the instances and points again and the scaling over here i want that to be dependent on the radius of each point so if you do that then we're getting this pretty cool let's also set in the icosphere the subdivisions on two so that it's a bit more smooth let's also give each icosphere a random rotation by adding in a random value set this from float to a vector and then if you connect this to rotation then they all have a random rotation let's also do shade smooth for these particles so let's do a set shade smooth node let's set that like this and then it's smooth let's now also create a material for the fire so let's do a set material node connect that over here and if you then go over here into the material properties you can click on plus over here and click on new to create a fire material and let's also in the set material set this on fire of course you can also go into material preview now because now we can actually see them the principal bsdf we don't need that i'm going to add in a emission node and i'm going to put that like uh, this to create a cool fire effect i found this effect if you do like a noise texture and you connect the factor into the color then you can set for example the scaling on 30 for example and if you then do the distortion if you set that higher you're getting this really cool effect let's set this on 1.5 for example Let's also give it a bit more detail by adding the detail to five and let's set the roughness a little bit higher. Another cool thing that I found is that when you have a layer weight node and you connect that, then you see it's like darker in the middle and brighter along the edges of the icospheres. Would be cool if we can combine the layer weight with the noise texture. To do this, if we click on the noise texture and do Ctrl T if you have the Node Wrangler add-on, and then we want to manipulate the vector data that streams over here with a 
mix color node. Connect that like this, and we want to mix this with the layer weight. And now if we preview this, then we're getting this. You now see along the edges, the distortion is like weird, different, and in the middle is like the normal distortion. Now to make it actually look like fire or lava or something like that, we want to add in a color ramp, place that over here. And as this value and the black value, we're going to change that to white. And this white value, we're going to change that to red. Now if you place that a bit more to the middle, then we can add in two more joints, like in the middle over here. So click plus plus. This joint, we're going to make that more like orange-ish. This joint... We're going to make that more like yellowish and then we're getting lava and now if you set the strength higher to like 20 then you're really getting some glowing effect and that looks really cool now we're getting this oof let's now combine the smoke with the fire and we're going to do that by going all the way to the end and if we add in a join geometry place that over there and we connect the smoke with that as well then we're getting fire and smoke you can especially see this if we go into render view mode then you see we're getting this already however if we do it in slow motion then you see yeah the fire is a bit too big in the beginning i want the fire to not be bigger than the smoke so if you go back into the notes for the fire this radius we want to change that a little bit with a map range node if you add in a map range node you can put that over here and to make the fire smaller you set the two max value a bit lower like this and then you see we're having this explosion one final thing that i think would be cool to do is that we can determine when the explosion happens because now it always happens at frame zero let's say we want to do it at frame 20 for example we can do this by having the original uv sphere only appear like after 20 frames so we can do this by adding in a delete geometry nodes and we want to delete the geometry of the uv sphere if the scene time is lower than for example 20 frames so if you do a scene time node and we also do a compare node and we set this from float to integer then we can say okay if the frames is lower than 20 frames delete the geometry now if you press play and you see it's not doing anything at all i've been playing around with this a lot to figure out why it's not doing it reason why although it is not doing it it's still counting over here the speed of each particle and the speed of each particle is now always zero so it will always be deleted so i want that the determination of the speed of each particle only happens after 20 frames to do this we can add in another compare node set this from float to integer as well and we want to say okay if the frame higher than 20 then it should determine the speed of each particle and we can do this by adding in a boolean math node Keep this on end and we want to say, okay, only delete the geometry if the speed is lower than zero and we're higher than 20 frames. So connect this compare node with the add and then connect this Boolean math node with the delete geometry. And then you will see that works. To make it a bit easier for yourself, you can add in like an integer node, set this on 20 and connect it with both. And then you have like a controller of when the explosion starts if you want to start it after 60 frames then you can make it like this okay it will go to 60 and then at 60 boom it explodes Control s to save the file very important by the way while i was editing this video i realized that i didn't even cover this if you want that your fireballs already stop over here instead of over here you can do this by adding in a math node between the radius and the map range node set this from add to subtract and subtract for example 0.3 from it but then you will also have to add in the map range node the 2 max. You have to add 0.3 to it. So make it like 0.6 in my case. And then you will see it's like this. Then they stop earlier. And also if you then start seeing some weird artifacts in your render. Like this one. To remove these. To fix this. You can just take these nodes. Move them to here. And we want to add in a delete geometry. Before the instances and points. And we want to say okay. If this map range node. If the radius is equal to zero. We really have to delete it. So if we do a compare node. And we set this from greater than to equal. Then we can say okay. If this value is equal to zero. Delete it. And then you should not have those weird artifacts anymore. So there we have our explosion. Completely made with simulation nodes in Blender. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. 
Comment down below if you have any questions. And if you want to help out the channel and you don't want to miss out on any future videos, please consider subscribing. And by the way, this Blender file will be available on my website, mtranimation.com. And with that being said, I see you in the next one. Thank you.